hell is a trash heap. Now I know that sometimes we get this idea of hell being under the earth and we get it this idea that it's in caverns and you know a bunch of demons are running around with pitchforks and there's torture devices and all of those things are fabrications that have come from extra biblical writings and ideas they are foreign to scripture and i'll tell you that there is a lot of confusion between what the old testament calls the place of the dead and what the new testament points to which is the lake of fire and so i'm just going to take a brief moment so that you can understand the difference when god breathed his spirit into adam and adam became a living being and adam then disobeyed god gave adam a promise through eve through eve there was a promise that her offspring would crush the head of the serpent that deceived them it would overcome them uh, overcome the punishment and destruction that had been brought upon them by the snake and through that promise there is now time in between the death and end of adam and eve and the promises fulfillment so that means that if there's opportunity for eternal life to be restored then they can't really just cease to exist there has to be some place that they are held on to in the interim and that's where shale came into being the Old Testament calls Sheol, or the place of the dead, a holding ground. You'll read about it in Proverbs. You'll read about it in other areas, um, in, in Samuel. And, and there's many, many instances where the Old Testament, not talking about final judgment, not talking about hell, but talking about a holding place, a place where people get stuck until the final judgment takes place. Revelation reveals that when the final judgment happens, that Sheol, the place of the dead, also the sea will give up all that it's been holding on to. Peter revealed that after Jesus was victorious in paying for our sin, he descended into Sheol to take hold of all those who are in the bosom of Abraham and lead them into heaven. The witch of Endor, when she was tricked by King Saul to bring up Samuel from the depths, she does so by uh, calling into Sheol, okay? But then when Jesus comes, he empties that out. That's why Matthew talks about that emptying process, and that's why Ephesians talks about how when Jesus leads captivity captive, he brings all those who had faith in God, who are in that holding place, he brings them in to heaven. In a lot of ways, we can see how Revelation refers to this as the first resurrection, okay? Now, as that happens, there's still another place. When Jesus talked about Lazarus and the rich man, Lazarus is taken to Sheol along with the rich man, and he is guarded in what we call the bosom of Abraham, where angels stand watch over those who are being held, awaiting the time for Jesus to be victorious over sin and to give what was necessary for them to be brought into heaven, the payment that God would receive, which was God's own blood through his son, okay? So they're waiting there while the rich man is left on the other side where he is in torment. Now, many translations kind of lead us into different directions because the English language can be tricky. But in many translations, it says that he is in the torment of fire. And one of the major problems we do is we kind of harmonize that in our brain, and that means in our brain what we think of is that he's in fire no he's in torment of fire that's going to come in so much torment in the visualization in the understanding that it's coming that he's trying to plead that an angel let lazarus dip his finger in some water so that he can have just the taste of uh, of something to give against the torment of flame not the flame the torment of flame because Sheol is not the flame. Gehenna is the flame. Hell is the final judgment. The holding place, Sheol, was 
a place to literally hold the people until that judgment would come, which Revelation speaks about. So hell is a trash heap. It is where, according to Isaiah, the last, uh, the last chapter of Isaiah, where we will all in heaven on an annual basis be brought back, or I think it's annual, I don't know, however heaven, it works in heaven, well, we'll all be brought back and look at this lake of fire and see we could have been there, but by the grace of God, we're not. There, this is, Isaiah writes about this. We'll, we'll come back at any given time and we will see that's where we should have been, but God spared us and Jesus gave us hope. And through Jesus, look at us now. That's why Ephesians says that we are trophies of his grace. So we will come back and we'll say, man, we were that close to the fire, but for the love of God, but for the grace of God, but for the goodness of God, we are in everlasting life and hope forevermore in the presence of our almighty God. That's good news. We get to see that. We get to see that. But that lake of fire, that place where the worm never dies and the fire is not quenched, is where all of the enemies of God are taken out of Sheol and thrown into for the final judgment. It's a trash heap, and that's why the idea of burning happens there. By the way, this is not Satan's little kingdom. This is not Satan's little domain. Satan is just as terrified to go to hell as anybody else is because he knows that there's torment there.